What does it really take to lose over a third of your body weight and actually keep it off? I dropped 37% of mine using Zepbound, Manjaro, Terzepatide, and now the newest research backs up what I've lived through the last year and a half. This isn't about hype or magic shots. It's about real medical treatment for a real disease. And today I'm breaking down what this new study says, the real numbers, the side effects, and what you need to know before you ask your doctor. So stick around, you're gonna want the whole truth before you take that very first step or you take your next shot. Welcome back to The Downsize. My name is Christopher Durham and my wife Lorraine and I are just a couple from the suburbs, married for 22 years, parents, and living proof that these GLP-1 medications can change your life. And here's something I wish someone had told me sooner. Obesity is not just about food or willpower. It's a real chronic disease. The American Medical Association, the World Health Organization, and the Obesity Medicine Association, along with many others around the world, have called it that for years. Your body fights to hold on to fat. Your hunger hormones fight you every step of the way. So for most of us, willpower alone just is not enough. We need real medical help. And that's what these shots like Terzepatide really are. They're not magic. They're not a fad. They're not a cheat. They're real medicine. They're real science. Together, we've lost over 150 pounds. I've lost more than 100 pounds on Terzepatide alone, dropping about 37% of my body weight, starting from 268.4 pounds. So when I talk about these results, this isn't theory for us. It's our daily life. It's our fridge. It's the way we cook, our grocery list, our doctor's visits our real fights with biology and genetics, and of course, it's this channel, The Downsized. What I share here is our research. It's our experience. I dig through that research every single day, every single night, and the lessons we've learned the hard way, not only from our experience, but from talking to you. This is not medical advice. It's honest talk from one family to another. Always take this back to your own doctor and figure out what's right for you. My job is to read the fine print, break it down in plain language, and share what I wish someone had told me at the beginning or 10 weeks in, 20 weeks in, 50 weeks in. There's always something to learn about these medications. And hey, if you want the real story, not the headlines and hype, hit the like and subscribe button. It's absolutely free. We'd love it if you did. It costs you nothing, and it helps you to stay in the loop when Lorraine and I share what works, what doesn't, and what's next. So let's jump into it. This is the latest research, a paper from Dr. Skomu and a team at the University of Wisconsin. It was published in Obesity Reviews earlier this year in 2025. The full title is a mouthful, so let's see if I can get it out. Efficacy and Safety of Terzepatide on Weight Loss in Patients Without Diabetes Mellitus, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Basically, this team didn't just win a new trial. They pulled together six of the biggest gold standard studies out there, all focused on people who were overweight or had obesity, but did not have diabetes. This is key because so much of this research has been done on people with diabetes, and that's important, but they react differently to these medications and lose weight a bit more slowly. The team compared what happened when this set of people took terzepatide once a week versus people who got a placebo shot. Now, I'd really love for them to stop doing this placebo versus non-placebo because, you know, half the crowd got no medication whatsoever, and they could have tested this against some glutide. Because in those placebos, there's no medicine in it. They just wanted to, and this was not a quick weekend study. This wasn't a small study. This was called a systematic review and meta-analysis. That means they searched all the top medical databases, Medline, PubMed, plus clinicaltrials.gov. They tossed out duplicates. They only kept the highest quality randomized controlled trials. That's why this paper is so solid. It combines thousands of people into one clear picture. So you're not hanging your hope on one company's press release. This didn't come from me, Lily. And in case you're wondering, this wasn't paid for by the drug company. It was funded by the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences, done by independent researchers. That means they didn't just do marketing for Tazepatide or Zepbound or Manjaro. They crunched the data, the good and the bad. So who are we really talking about here? These six trials didn't just come from one hospital or one country. 
they pulled in people from all over the world. The big ones you might have heard of, the Surmount studies, Surmount 1, 2, 3, and 4, plus studies focused on people in China and Japan. So we're talking North America, Europe, and Asia. Real people, not just a handful in a lab. Altogether, this research pulled in data from over 5,000 people. Most were adults with a BMI of 27 or higher. That's the usual cutoff for being overweight. A lot had a BMI of over 30, so they were living with obesity. Many had related health issues like high blood pressure or cholesterol. The studies ran anywhere from 52 weeks to 88 weeks. So that's one year, nearly two years, tracking weight, waist size, cholesterol, blood sugar, side effects, the entire picture over real time. So when I share these numbers today, remember, these aren't just my results or Lorraine's. These are thousands of people across the world showing us what terzepatide really does if you stick with it. Here's the headline, and everybody wants to know this, how much weight did they lose? The analysis found that on average, people taking terzepatide lost about 16% of their body weight compared to people on placebo who basically stayed the same. The exact number, minus 16.32%. Not marking spin, just straight data. So let's break that down. If you weigh 250 pounds, that's about 40 pounds gone. If you're closer to 200, that's about 32 pounds. For me, when I first started, that's exactly what it looked like. My first 30 or 40 pounds came off in those early months. No question. But here's the thing. I didn't stop at 16%. And a lot of people don't. I started at 268.4 pounds. And today I'm down about 37% of my body weight. Lorraine's taken terzepatide too. She's lost about 50 pounds, a little bit more. It's the driving force, the medical treatment that helped us treat obesity as a disease, and not simply as a fad diet. They didn't just look at percentages. They checked real pounds too. On average, people lost about 14 kilograms more than placebo, about 30 pounds more just from the medicine. So when you see ads bragging about double digit weight loss, this is where that comes from. It's real and it's in the numbers. It wasn't just the number on the scale that moved. This research showed a whole list of changes that matter, not just from your gene size, but for your actual health. Waistline shrank. On average, people lost about 12 centimeters around the waist. That's just under five inches off your belly, and belly fat is the dangerous fat, the kind that hits your heart health the hardest. So for me, I actually went from a size 42 men's waist pants down to a 32, so I lost 10 inches around my waist. BMI dropped as well. People saw about six points BMI come off. If you started at a BMI of 35 or 40, that's a big shift back towards a healthier range. Blood pressure, also better. The top number, your systolic dropped by about six and a half points. The bottom number, your diastolic dropped about four points. Even small drops here can mean a lower risk from strokes and heart attacks down the line. I have personally been on blood pressure medications for 20 plus year. And over the course of the treatment and losing the weight, I'm no longer on these medications. And my doctor is very pleased with where my blood pressure is. The study looked at blood fats to triglycerides, the fat floating around in your blood. They went down about 28 points. LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, dropped about six points. And HDL, the good cholesterol, actually went up by almost 10%. So it's not just about losing pounds. It's about giving your heart and your whole body a break. And that's why this matters for people like me and Lorraine. We're not just about shrinking our genes. We're trying to stick around longer, stay healthier, and enjoy our lives. So here's the honest trade-off. Your stomach might hate you for a bit. There are side effects. This research shows that people on terzepatide were three times more likely to feel nausea, six times more likely to throw up three times more likely to get diarrhea or constipation. We felt much of that our first month, not every day, but enough that I knew it was real. Lorraine too. Some people stop early because they just can't handle. The numbers show you're about twice as likely to quit because of side effects compared to the placebo. Some people push through, some switch meds, some adjust their dose. If you're about to start, take it slow Keep plain crackers around, sip water, eat small meals. I like the nice diet ginger ale. Go slow if you need to. And don't tough it out in silence. Tell your doctor. There is no prize for suffering through it alone. 
I still remember opening our fridge that first month. Protein shakes, yogurt cups, and I'm not a protein shake fan, but Lorraine loves them. Fresh vegetables and the leftovers from before we started the medication. Lorraine would laugh, trying to connect which foods were triggering which side effects. And now we know that relationship is personal and always changing. It's not glamorous, but it works. And we do not regret taking this medication for even one moment. We only regret, honestly, not taking it soon. Were there side effects along the way? Absolutely, but they could all be managed either by working with your local doctor or by over-the-counter remedies. Manage them carefully and be proactive and it'll be okay. But stomach stuff is only half of the story. The study found the other side effects you might not expect. One, low blood sugar. Even if you don't have diabetes, you can get a dip if you're barely eating or you skip meals. They found you're about six times more likely to have a low blood sugar event than someone on placebo. If you feel shaky or sweaty or dizzy, eat something and talk to your doctor. Make sure that your body is getting the fuel and the nutrition that it needs. Number two, injection site reactions. That just means a red bump or an itchy spot where you poke the pen. People were 14 times more likely to have that than the placebo. But honestly, it's usually just a red dot that goes away. I think in the course of the last 90 weeks I've been doing these shots, I've had it once. And honestly, it's not a big deal. Third, hair loss. Now, you know, I started with an entire head of hair. Well, I had nothing to do with this medication, but it, it does happen and people report it frequently. This review found people were about five times more likely to shed hair while losing weight on terzepatide. Fast weight loss can stress your hair follicles. This isn't really about terzepatide. It's about the rapid weight loss. For some people, it's mild. For others, it's more obvious. For many, it's not a problem at all. The good news is it usually grows back once your body settles. This is why I always say get enough protein, keep up your nutrition, and do not panic. If you see more hair in the shower drain, it's biology doing its thing. So why does all this happen? Let's pull back for a second and talk science, plain and simple. Terzepatide works by mimicking two hormones your gut makes naturally, GLP-1 and GIP. These hormones tell your brain you're full. They slow down how fast your stomach empties. They help your pancreas release insulin at the right times. So you feel full sooner. You eat less, your blood sugar stays steadier. That's why the weight comes off. And that's also why your stomach acts up. The signals are all happening in your gut first. And that's why terzepatide is called a twin cretin. Now, I've never heard the phrase twin cretin, but this research talks about it. It's hitting two switches, GLP-1 and GIP, instead of just one, like semaglutide does. So how does this medication stack up against Wagovi or Ozempic? Ozempic's been around for a long time. You see it in the news all the time. This paper compared the results to other studies and found semaglutide helps people without diabetes lose about 11% of their body weight, which is solid. People are doing well with it. But terzepatide came in closer to 16%. So why the difference? Because terzepatide works on two hormones, not just one. That's stronger biology. But the trade-offs, the nausea, and a lot of people report actually the side effects are a bit less with terzepatide. So this is not magic. It's science. You still have to put the work in. It's not going to magically fall off. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, though. What happens if you stop? Because that's, you know, the, the guy at the party is going to tell you you're, you're going to gain all the weight back, right? Well, one of the big surmount trials showed exactly what many of us worry about. People who stayed on terzepatide lost about 21% of their body weight. So if you're 250 pounds, that's more than 50 pounds gone. But when they stopped and switched to a placebo, they regained about two-thirds of the weight within a year. So if you lose 50 pounds, you could see 30 or more creep back if you stop and don't have a plan. And this matches what step trials for semaglutide found too. When you stop, your hunger hormones come roaring back. These medications are a treatment for the disease of obesity. They are not a cure. This isn't your willpower failing. It's your biology doing exactly what it was built to do. Trisepatite is not a detox or a trendy cleanse. It's a medical treatment for a real disease, just like blood pressure or cholesterol meds. If you stop cold, the biology that made you gain weight is still there, ready to fight back. Now, just to be fair, Here's what this research cannot tell you yet. It shows us the averages, but it doesn't tell you exactly how much you might lose 
It doesn't compare to zapatide and semaglutide head to head in the exact same giant trial. That's still happening now. And it doesn't show us what happens after three, five, or 10 years. That's why Lorraine and I keep reading every new study that drops, because the long game is what really matters. In our house, that long game means real results. I've lost 37% of my body weight since starting to zapatide. Lorraine's used it as well and done very well, losing 50 pounds. We're living proof this is real treatment, not just another fad or a trick. So here's my plain answer if you're wondering, should I try terzepatide? First, talk to your doctor. If they seem unfamiliar or skeptical, bring the research with you. We'll drop a link to the full paper in the description so you can print it, mark it up, and go through it together. Ask about your odds, the side effects, and whether it fits your story and your health needs. And if you need backup, bring the guidelines to the AMA, the American Diabetes Association, and the Obesity Medicine Association. They all back using these medications to treat obesity as real medical care. Second, plan for the trade-offs. Keep easy protein ready, eat smaller meals, stay hydrated. Those small things help a lot. If your stomach flips, talk to your doctor about slowing your dose increase. Don't tough it out alone. Third, do not treat this like a quick fix diet. Terzepatite is a tool. It's medicine. You still need real food, daily habits, and a plan for what happens next. Losing the weight is one step. Keeping it off, that's the real fight. Rain and I have honestly used this as a tool to learn how to live better, how to eat better, and build healthier habits. And last, do not ever feel ashamed for needing help. Obesity is a real disease recognized by the AMA and the WHO for a reason. Eating medicine doesn't mean you're weak. This is about biology, not willpower. And this study backs it up. Our adventure backs it up. And yeah, the system makes it too expensive for too many people. That's a fight we'll keep having another day. Because it shouldn't be this hard for people to get real treatment for a real disease. So that's the truth, the results from the study. Terzepatide works. This research shows it clearly. 16% average weight loss for people without diabetes. Real side effects, real trade-offs, and real life-changing results when you treat obesity as what it is, a chronic disease. If this gave you something to think about, do me a favor, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, and share this with someone who might need to hear about it. Nobody should feel like they have to figure this out in the dark. And if you want more than just videos, make sure you join us most Wednesday nights for the Downside Live. Lorraine and I go live right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We take your questions, we celebrate your wins, we talk about the news, and we remind each other that we're not doing this alone. So grab your water, hop in the chat, bring your questions and your hope, and we'd love to see you there. We'll keep reading the studies, testing things on ourselves, and telling you exactly what we find, the good, the bad, and the weird bathroom moments even. Seems like we talk about poop a lot. And if you're wondering would I do it again, absolutely I would do it again. If only I would do it sooner. Because that's real life. So if you remember nothing else, remember this, 16% is possible, 37% is possible. Not because I'm special, but because for the first time we treated obesity like the disease it is. Stick with us. We're here every single day to bring you the facts, the real talk, and the hope you deserve. My name is Christopher Durham, and we are The Downside.